Chef Dan, he is Spotlight Chef today. Um, Chef Dan Bears, he's a, a chef instructor at Escoffier School of Culinary Arts who aids online students, helping them navigate their culinary education. But before working in his current role, he began his culinary career by achieving his associate degree in culinary arts and has 10 years of experience, including breakfast and butchery, spanning the restaurant, hotel, and cruise ship industries. Chef Dan, say hello to our good people here today. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you all for making time out of your day to come and hang out in uh, in my kitchen here. Um, and thank you for that introduction. We are, um, yeah, just wanted to, we're uh, going to be talking through some food. I'm going to make some savory crepes with you and show you how to make a quick Mornay sauce and how to get uh, that traditional perfect crepe here. So again, thank you for making time to join. I saw a lot of different places, a lot of people from over the United States um, and international. So again, thank you for making time. I myself uh, live from California to South Carolina. I'm currently in uh, South Carolina. So I love seeing uh, the different food scenes all the way across the nation. So um, thank you again so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and start the cooking here. We're going to move over to the cutting board and we're going to talk about a savory crepe. All right. Sure that we are on the cutting board. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so um, we're thinking about crepes, thinking about many different things. Oftentimes it's sweet, right? We'll have a sweet crepe with some strawberry filling, a little bit of powdered sugar and chocolate syrup on top, um, but it can be made savory. So today we're going to make um, a savory crepe. What I do want to focus on, uh, we're going to focus on making a Mornay sauce, and then we're also going to focus on uh, the crepe itself. So first thing that I want to start with right here. So you can see this batter as I move my hand left and right, and the, the liquid kind of wobbles around. Crepe batter is very, very thin, no lumps, very runny here. It's not like pancake batter, okay? With pancake batter, you want a little bit of lump, you want that rise, but we're not trying to get rise out of it. We are just trying to get a nice, thin, um, that crepe, uh, here, that base right here. So in here, uh, with the recipe that was kind of, uh, that was given with this, we have our eggs, our flour, our milk, and our little bit of salt here. So first, first thing I'm going to do is make the crepe. What I highly recommend is using a non-stick pan here. Okay, so this is a metal, it has that Teflon coating along the inside. That will keep the crepe from sticking to the bottom here. I'm not gonna put too much oil. You can see that I have a little bit of oil around the outside here. Um, but I just brushed it with a paper towel here, too much oil, and then we're deep frying it, right? I'm not trying to make a donut. I want to make this nice thin crepe. So first things first, I'm going to let this pan get nice and warm before I add the crepe in here. Okay. Beautiful. This, uh, as I'm making this crepe, so that is one of the things that you can learn and, and that we make in this culinary um, field here. So if you, as you decide to take the opportunity to expand your food knowledge here, you will learn this in school. I'm going to do a quick demo and you can take the recipes and play with them. And there's so much to be learned. We're also going to make a quick Mornay sauce, which is another, uh, it's a variant sauce of one of the mother sauces that we go over in school here. Okay. So I've let my pan get nice and warm here. I have it at about medium, okay, medium heat. I don't want to do it too high because it'll burn. I don't want to do too low because uh, then it'll end up sticking to the bottom of the pan. So you have to find that nice medium heat. Crepe batter, again, is going to be the milk, flour, salt, and eggs in here, okay? Nice and thin, no lumps is what we're going for here. And this technique, as soon as I get the crepe in here into this hot pan, I'm going to roll my wrist around. Okay, we bring that back over to the cutting board so that you can see it here. Okay, so I'm gonna move it all the way around in a circular motion so I can get that crepe all the way throughout, okay? This pan is gonna be great with a third cup measuring cup. So I'm gonna get my whisk out of there. It's nice and mixed. I'm gonna take a, as close to a level scoop as I can get of this crepe batter in here and move it over to the pan, okay? All right, so as I get to the center here, I'm gonna drop it in and I'm gonna start moving my wrist, tilting and turning so I get a nice even batter all the way around. I want that nice circle. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep rocking it around back and forth until I get every area of the pan covered here. And I'll show you that once I get it nice and level here. All right, so I do have a couple of holes around the edges, but 
what you can see is you can see I have a nice, even thin layer around the pan here. It's pulling up down here because that's the way I'm leaning, but I want it as thin and even as possible here. Okay. And while this is cooking, we'll have a little bit of a moment. I'm going to take a little bit more batter and fill those holes from the areas that I missed here. So it's nice and even all the way across. And I'm going to rotate again, make sure I fill those holes in. And you can see that thin layer right here. You can see that thin layer forming around the outside. Okay. It is a little bit uneven, but it'll cook so long as the whole thing is thin and covering the whole bottom of the pan here. Okay. What you're aiming for with crepes is we don't want that deep golden brown coloring. We want a little bit of golden brown coloring and we want those slightly crispy edges. Okay. So I'm going to let it sit on that burner on medium low. Um, there's a little bit of steam coming off here. I'm just going to let it set. I'm going to wait till most of it is cooked almost all the way through here. Okay. So Chef Good. Dan, while that's cooking, do you use yeah. a European flour or an all-purpose flour? I use all-purpose flour for this. All-purpose flour works great. Um, and it's typically what you want to use in crepes. You don't want to use like a bread flour in this situation because the protein content is too high here. So all-purpose hits the mark. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, great question. All right. I'm going to angle that camera up just a little bit here. Okay, so you can see the entirety of the pan. This is cooked. I'm touching it and no liquid is coming off. It started to set. So now it's time for me to flip. Okay, this is not one of those things you're going to do like an egg or an omelet. Uh, what you're going to do is very gently come around the outside and start getting that crispy exterior to come undone. Okay, beautiful. And then I'm going to find the most solid cooked point and wiggle the spatula in here. Slowly, 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 starting to get it to release. And once I have a good hold on it, I'm gonna take it with my hand and then peel it off. Okay, slowly starting to peel here, trying to keep it intact. It looks like it's a little bit undercooked. So as I was doing that, I noticed some ripping. So I'm gonna let it sit just a little bit longer to cook there. It's a very delicate process. It takes time um, to get that perfect crepe. I want to make sure that all everything sets. The batter is really close to set so that we can flip the whole thing in one fell swoop. All right, good. Good, 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 good. And you can see little bubbles forming. You can see a big bubble forming. Okay, you can see that bubble forming right here. That's where it's cooking underneath and that air is escaping, which means it's starting to set a little bit more, which is right where I want it. That also makes it easier to do the flip here. Awesome. All right, so I'm able to pick up the majority of it, and I'm going to go ahead and lift it all the way up and get it to flip over. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see in the pan, everything is cooked. There's minimal coloring on it. I still have the majority of that nice round texture, that little bit of crispiness around the outside. I'm going to let it set a little bit more and start to get that little bit of golden browning on that side. What we're doing for the filling today is going to be our ham, potato, and onions. So this is just ham, potato, onions that's already been cooked off ahead of time and kept warm. So I cut the potatoes, peel them, rinse them, peel them, cut them into little cubes, cut my onions into cubes, and the ham cut into the same size here. It's already cooked. Uh, the ham is already cooked. So I just needed to wait for the potatoes to get soft and the onions to get a little bit of color here. Um, so all I did, again, was cut those into the same size so they cook evenly and heat it up until the potatoes were cooked all the way through. All right, take a look at this crepe. Okay, so it's holding its shape. I can pick it up with my hand and move it around. It's not falling apart. And now I just want a little bit of golden brown coloring on it. So I'm gonna go until we get that golden brown coloring and then we can make the Mornay. What I have, what I will end up with. So I have this crepe that I made earlier. So again, we want something that is nice and thin, has a few golden brown spots all the way through it, but we don't want a lot of color. We're not trying to make it like a pancake. Basically, we're making a vehicle, a starchy vehicle here that's going to hold all of the food. Um, I'm not looking for a whole lot of flavor out of this. Again, with the flour, um, flour, eggs, and milk, it's not going to be a, a flavor thing, but it is going to be carbohydrates. It's going to help hold all of the goods together, that potato and onion that we were just talking about. Awesome. So almost have a little bit of golden brown color there. It's holding its shape. So I'm just going to let that sit for another 10 seconds. Awesome. So I can see the bubbles rising up here. 
It's rising from the inside and creating another bubble. I have a couple golden brown spots here um, and here. I know they're a little bit hard to see, but that's how I know it's done. Again, I'm not aiming for a good golden brown consistency here. I want it to be malleable. Um, if I cook it and caramelize it, it's going to be hard to fold later. So this is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and set it with the other crepe for our finished product. Remember, nice thin batter, no lumps. Um, and then you want to circle it around the pan so it's nice and even all the way throughout, okay? Next, we are going to move on to making a Mornay here. So for, uh, or a, a simple version of the Mornay here, okay? So uh, first thing I have to do is make a roux. So in this pot, I have some melted butter, okay? All I have is a little bit of melted butter in there. And then I'm going to take some flour and mix it in. Again, following the recipe, um, ratio for roux should be one to one here. Okay. And what I want to do when I'm making a roux is I want to whisk fast and sprinkle slow. You don't want any lumps in your roux. If you get lumps in your roux, then you're going to have a chunky sauce. I want it to be nice and smooth. Beautiful. And the roux should not be thick. This is not a paste. It should look almost like wet sand here or have the consistency of wet sand. Beautiful. I'll move that over so everyone can see it here. Okay, so into the camera, you can see it pulling up at the bottom here. It's still pretty liquidy, right? I'm not making a paste here. I just want a nice, even mixture, that one-to-one -one ratio of butter and flour here. So that's gonna be our thickening agent, okay? I think traditionally when we make roux, uh, we tend to uh, make them really thick to help the sauce thicken up faster. But this way I'm allowing it to cook for just a little bit before I add in the milk. Um, and it will thicken up as it reduces when I add the cheese here. So we have our butter and our flour in here, still pretty liquidy, um, but it's going to help thicken here. That's what we're looking for with the roux. Okay. All right, next step is going to be adding in the milk. So I have my milk here, and same thing. Uh, same thing as with the roux uh, when adding the flour. I'm going to pour it in very slowly while whisking very fast. So if I pour it in all at once, the roux has potential to clump up uh, and then it'll be gummy and thick. And I don't want it to be gummy and thick. I want it to be a nice smooth sauce. So I'm gonna add the milk little by little here and then make sure that there's no lumps, make sure that there's nothing clumping up so I can get that sauce to come together. You can see it's sticking to the bottom here and it's still pretty chunky, right? Um, so you can see as it's sticking to the bottom of the pan here, what I really wanna do is make sure Wow, it's already thickening up really fast, that I'm stirring very vigorously while I add that milk in little by little here. Make sure that milk is evenly incorporated. Make sure that we have a nice smooth sauce. Okay, stirring, stirring, stirring. Again, right here, all I'm doing is whisk, whisk, whisk. Just want to make sure that the roux and the milk are marrying. They're joining together here. And there's no lumps. Good. If it's too thick, add a little bit of milk. If it's too thin, you're just going to leave it on heat for a little bit longer. And that'll help it thicken up here. All right. So now you can see I have the sauce consistency, right? I have this nice milkiness to it. I wanna lean it towards the thin side when I'm making this recipe here, because I'm going to be adding some cheese, which is gonna melt and thicken up, okay? So let's take a look at this here. So I've added my milk, I have my flour and I have my melted butter and flour combined. And I have this pretty loose consistency, right? When I pick it up, it's not sticking to the spatula, it just drops right back in. That is where I want it. So I'm gonna leave it over my low heat here. Next thing I'm going to add is the cheese, the Gruyere cheese that I've uh, cubed up here. I'm gonna add a little handful at a time and then make sure that it melts. Good. And while that is melting, that is going to help the sauce thicken up. What we're aiming for is called nappe consistency. That means where it coats the back of the spoon but doesn't run into itself when you run your finger down the middle here. Okay, so while you're stirring, maybe you can answer a few questions. We've had a lot come in. Yeah, um, of course. Okay, so one, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Um, so you, I can cook the onions and potatoes in oil or butter and then mix them in with the cooked chicken for the filling? 
Yeah, you can definitely do cooked chicken if you don't want to do ham here. That's a great flavor profile for the Mornay sauce. Okay, awesome. And let me know if you have time for a few more. Yeah, of course. Just waiting okay. for the cheese to melt right here. So okay, I'm, that's... I'm just stirring and letting that cheese melt. <laughs> Perfect. So good timing. So what is the difference between a bechamel and a Mornay? Great question. So a traditional, um, traditional Mornay sauce comes from a bechamel. Bechamel is one of the mother sauces, one of their main uh, six sauces here. And so you would take, uh, if you were to do a traditional Mornay, you would take the bechamel and then you would add that uh, cheese to it while reducing it um, there. So Mornay mother sauce means it's kind of your root based sauce. So all sauces can be made from those six sauces. Um, and then every other sauce after that is just a variant. So Mornay is a variant of the bechamel here. Great question. Okay, let me see. Um, let's see. Okay, so that, I think you answered that, that the bechamel is before the cheese and the cheese is the Mornay. Okay. I think we, oh, what are the other five sauces? Great question. So we have bechamel and then we have our espanol. Then we have, uh, so bechamel is going to be um, one of your, um, your bechamel, your espanol, you have your tomato, then you have hollandaise, then you have velouté, and then you have demi-gloss. And those are gonna be your six main sauces. Uh, bechamel is uh, traditionally gonna be a milk-based sauce. Uh, the difference between bechamel and velouté is so you still make a roux and then you add your liquid to it, um, but your bechamel is going to be that milk-based or cream-based. And then your velouté is going to, you're going to use chicken stock instead of uh, like the milk that I added here. Great Thank questions. Thank you. I think we are caught up with questions, but if I did miss one, please make sure to put it in the chat or in the Q&A section. We're watching both as we continue awesome. to watch the demonstration here. And we are getting there. So here I have my sauce right on the spoon there. It's coating the spoon really well. And what happens if I run my finger down the center, notice that gravity doesn't pull the rest of the sauce back in very fast, okay? So that's really close to nappe here. I Meaning if I hold the spoon up, run my finger down the back of it, it doesn't run right in. So it's not very watery here. It's still a little bit loose. So I'm gonna go just a little bit further here on the heat while that cheese is melting, but we are almost there. Beautiful. And then the last thing I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper um, to this. This is a salt pepper mixture. It's a quarter cup salt to one teaspoon pepper here. I'm going to add that in to help season it. Great. All right. I still have a few cheese chunks in here, uh, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and move forward. I have that nice sauce consistency. Remember when I was lifting the whisk up before and things were not holding to it? Now we have that sauce consistency where that cheese is melting in and it's going to stick to the top of the crepe here. So, so we, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, no so good. I was going to say we are going to cover the program in more detail, but there were, there's been a few questions asking are the online classes like this? Um, we will cover the program in more detail, but just so um, from your perspective. Yeah, yeah of course. So uh, the classes will meet once a week and we will uh, in class and we will talk about uh, the recipes for the week. And there are videos on how to do the recipes uh, done by chefs in a uh, professional kitchen. And so we walk you through step by step and then your chef instructor is there to help uh, answer any questions you may have while you are getting um, all of your recipes together. Great question. So. Uh, Right here on the plate, I have my first scrape. I'm gonna take a heaping scoop of the potatoes, onions, and ham. Make sure it's nice and filled. Okay. I'm gonna start by rolling one side toward me. We're just doing a trifold here. And then the other side over that. And then I'm going to roll it. And that is our crepe, okay? That's how we're gonna present it. You leave the ends open. It's not like a burrito. We just want that trifold here. So there is one, and then we're going to do it again with our second crepe. Potatoes and onions into the crepe. Awesome. You can see I'm just making a line down the center here. Right. Same thing. I want to fold the one. Uh, I want to roll it to the center of the plate. So I'm going to fold the one that's in the center of the plate towards me first. 
then the trifold, and then I'm gonna roll it over so that it stays closed, right? We need that pressure to stay closed. So we have these two beautiful crepes. They have their ends open, a little bit of filling here. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle it with some of the Mornay sauce over the top. Let me get my whisk out of here. Beautiful. And then this is this is a lot of the flavor here, right? So I want to make sure that I get that cheese sauce all over the top. Um, so otherwise, it would be a very dry uh, consistency here on the crepe. Do you notice there's not a lot of coloring on the crepes here? We're not aiming for coloring. We just want everything to hold together. Beautiful, nice, cheesy sauce. You can see it holding to the spoon and holding to the pot here. I'm going to do one more scoop to kind of fill in the plate. I'm just doing this zigzag back and forth so that that cheese sauce can combine into the crepes. And last thing we're going to do is we are going to garnish. So this is pretty bland, right? Uh, you eat with your eyes first. So I want to make it more attractive, a little bit of color here. So I have the cheese sauce, the crepe, the white plate, um, very bland in color. So to help it pop, I'm going to sprinkle some green onions around the top. Awesome to help with the color there. And so now we have, as opposed to your uh, more traditional, what we see, sweet crepe. Now we have the savory crepe of potato, onions, ham, and then we have a cheese sauce over the top with some beautiful green onions. And that's gonna be our finished product. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see if I have any more questions. Any questions for Chef Dan? Okay, I'm just looking. I see a lot of looks beautiful. Thank you. You did an awesome job. I see a lot of thank yous. Yeah, you're very welcome. Questions. And, and, and these, these recipes were um, uh, given to you uh, for, for this demo. So feel free to take the recipes, make it home, practice, play with it. It's never going to come out perfect the first time, but doing it again and again is how you build that skill set. Okay, I do see a couple of questions. One, can you put the sauce, the cheese sauce inside? Yeah, you can definitely put the cheese sauce inside if you'd like a little bit more uh, sauce in there. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Just looking here. Okay. Let me see, they're just coming in. And they said something, let me see, I saw something about a broiler for color. Would yeah. you put it in? Yeah, you could definitely throw this under a boiler. A boiler, a baking heats from the bottom, boiling heats from the top. So you could put a little bit more cheese on top. Uh, and then uh, boil it to get some nice golden browning there on top of your cheese sauce. Uh, just make sure you do the green onions last, otherwise those green onions will burn in there. Okay, great. And let's see. So, okay, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to paraphrase this question. So um, it says, what do you think with us who think we know everything but need the basic training how would how would we approach that um for those people that that fully understand i'm, I'm a little bit confused by the question yeah i'm trying to trying to to figure it out for so i think what i'm guessing is uh someone who thinks they know a lot about cooking but doesn't have the basics how would we yeah. work with somebody like that a great great question so the first class uh that you go through is going to be culinary foundation so you start from the bottom you can't build a pyramid unless you have a solid base so if you do know a lot about cooking and a lot about food there's many different things even if you've made um a thousand different recipes there's still recipes out there you haven't made so we start with the base and work our way up and if you feel like you have a good base um it will only get more exciting the further along you go as you build those skills great question Okay, great. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what they were they were asking. So, <laughs> so okay, good. Um, just looking to see. I thought crepes were breakfast food. Um, were for sweet breakfast foods. Yeah, they can definitely be. Um, they can be a breakfast food. They can be sweet. They can also be savory here. Okay, awesome. So, okay. Any other questions? Okay, do some people are agreeing that they struggle with cutting, cutting too fast. Um, does it differ from electric stove to fire? 
So I can make one second how to get some water. A little hot okay. in here. <laughs> um, yeah, it does differ there. So fire, uh, when you turn the heat off, the heat stops instantly. But when you do an electric stove, if you leave it sitting on there, that area is still hot. Um, so there is a big difference there. Okay. Awesome. And will we try different types of food, like cooking, different types of cultures? Yes, you do have world cuisines. I don't know if you want to speak to that, Chef Dan. If not, we can handle it during the presentation. Um, yeah, so we, we go through a different country and world cuisines. So we do a different region every time and kind of cook that regional dish. Um, so you do have a lot of um, experience there. Awesome. Well, Chef Dan, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I think, um, again, the crepes look great. I know a lot of people were commenting how good they looked and they're going to try the recipe. I'm going to get Samada back on over here and see if she has any follow-ups here. So, but awesome. we appreciate thank everything. You all. Thank you, Chef.